Hi, this is Gail with Beaded Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to take a bead, something along these lines, and we are going to turn it into a pendant. So this is what our project is going to be today. So you'll learn how to do this wire weaving pendant. I happen to be using like two or three different weaves. You can use whatever weaves you want. I do have a video on how to do various two wire weaves. I'll link that down below or somewhere up in here where you may see a little eye or something. Um, if you enjoy today's video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really does help me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you'd like to see more wire weaving videos, please also give me a thumbs up. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some other pendants I did to show you how I got to this particular design. And there are some other designs in there. So if you'd like me to make a video on some of those other designs, just go ahead and let me know which one. Two like. pieces of 22 gauge wire. In this case, I've cut them about seven inches long or so. I have some 28 gauge wire. I'm going to be using a um, an antique copper just so you can see it a little better against the bright copper. You will need a bead. Now the important part of choosing a bead is that it has to be able to accommodate two thicknesses of the 22 gauge wire. A lot of gemstones aren't able to do this, so you may have to look for a bead like this. This is like a faux turquoise type stuff. Now, I just got this at uh, Joann's or Michael's or whatever, but um, it's about uh, a little over maybe a one inch diameter, but whatever you have should be good. Um, I have some tools, and some of the tools I have is I have a pair of flat nose pliers. Now, I do have Tool Magic on it. I do have a video about Tool Magic. It is not absolutely necessary. I just happen to like using it. A pair of round nose pliers. A pair of flush cutters. Um, it's best if you have one that has a very sharp tip so you can get into some of the nooks and crannies. Um, I have a bale making plier here, but you can also use something like a dowel. This is just what we're going to use to go ahead and size our bale. So I've cut myself about a three foot piece of the 28 gauge wire, and we're going to start with a modified sumac weave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of wire. This is one of my 22 gauges right here, and I'm going to put this tail over. I'm going to leave about a five inch tail because I may need it later. Whoopsie daisy. What I'm going to do is wrap um, once loosely and then two a little bit tighter. So I've got it looking like this. I've got the wire coming across the top. I'm going to put in my second piece of wire and then I'm going to wrap around the bottom piece. And I'm gonna separate these just a little bit so we can tell what the top and the bottom are. I'm wrapping once around the bottom, going through between the two wires, going back over both wires, over the top, through the two wires, over the top again, over both, through, and then across the back again, across both wires. Now I'm going to continue doing this for roughly an inch to an inch and a half. I've got roughly an inch and a half done, and now I'm going to go ahead and lengthen this wire. So I'm going to take my pliers, and I'm gonna get hold of my 22 gauge, and I'm going to pull gently. And you can see that it pulls out. I usually like to do a little bit of it at a time because I don't want to pull the wires out of the weaving. I want to leave about two and a half inches on this side because this is going to be my bale side and this is going to be my weaving side. So now that I've got this, what do I do? First, make sure that your weave is, is pretty compact. So I usually like to do this with a pair of pliers, but there we go. It's pretty compact. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to put it on the wire, kind of grip it with my other fingers over here, 
and just start to gently turn it. Actually using my thumb is probably easier. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a loop. It looks kind of like this at first. And then I'm going to loop it up a little bit more. So I'm going to loop and then come up. So you can see it's almost like a double loop. Now I'm going to separate the wires a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and move these out just so I know, you know, I've got a good space in between these. If you have to move the, um, the bail wires just a little bit down, you can keep on with this particular weave if that's what you like. I'm going to move to a basket weave. And that's just to give this a little bit of interest. So for, the, for moving to the basket weave, so I'm coming across the top now. And what I'm going to do is I've gone over the top and through these once. I'm going to get, do it again. So that's twice. I'm going to come over again a third time, but instead of going around both wires, I'm going to go through and then under. So I'm coming under the bottom wire. So I'm wrapping one, two, going over a third time, going through the two wires, and then coming up and over the so top. So you see, I've got about another half inch or so. And I'm going to try first, I'm going to try to compress it. <clears throat> and by the way, when you're doing basket weave, do your best to keep your wires parallel with each other. But don't worry if they're not exactly parallel because actually it can make for an interesting look. Now what I'm going to do before I go on just a little bit further, I'm going to take my uh, flat nose pliers and I'm going to flatten this part out a little bit more. Because right now you can see that it's kind of curved in. And I want to be able to show that basket or that um, weave a little bit more. So I'm going to just flatten this out and do this very gently. So I've got that flattened out just a little bit more. All right, so I've got this and this is pretty much the way it looks. And if you have some wire showing, some base wire showing, you can just go ahead and manipulate that a little bit. So move your little wires back into where you want them. I've got this. Now I'm going to slip on my bale wires again and position these where I want them. So I'm going to look and I'm going to check and see how close I am from the end of this weaving to the bale wire. Now I happen to be pretty close. But I want to go ahead and do a little bit more of a curve to this. Now, using the basket weave is, is very useful in this particular case because right now I'm really close to being at the end of the bale wire. But I, you know, I could probably go another quarter of an inch or so after I do this particular wave. But basket weave has its purpose too. So I'm holding. I'm holding the bead and I've got it to where I want it. So I'm holding it down here and I'm gently just going ahead and making a wave. So you can see what this looks like. And you just may have to manipulate it a bit. That's okay. So I put in a little bit more of an aggressive wave here. But now you can see that when I bring it up, it's just about to this wire, but maybe not quite to the bale wire. It's a great thing about basket weave is that I had it really compressed, but I can go ahead and lengthen these a little bit. So I can pull on the wires a bit and make the weave a little bit looser. All right, so I've got this. I'm going to take this wire out of the way. That was my weaving wire. And again, I'm separating the two wires a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
take one of the wires and put it over the front of the bail wire and the other one over the back of the bail wire. So it kind of sandwiches the bail wire. Now I'm going to pull these so that my weaving pretty much ends up right at the bail wire. At this point I'm going to take the front wire and move it to the back because I want to, um, I guess, secure it a little bit more. And I'm going to take the front wire, or the back wire rather, and move it to the front. So now it looks like this. This will give me a little decoration on the back. This gives me a little decoration on the front. And meanwhile, I've got my bail wires safely sandwiched. So here I go. I'm going to go ahead and even these two out just because uh, I think it's a little easier to work with. Now I'm going to leave these two wires as is for the time being and I'm going to work on the bail. So what I need to do is I need to cut off another piece of wire, um, the 28 gauge, and this time I'm going to cut off oh, a foot and a half, two feet. I would rather have a little bit more wire left over rather than run out because it's really a pain when you're doing a bale and you run out of All wire. All right, now I've got my new 28 gauge wire. I'm going to leave about a two or three inch tail this time, and I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it to the back and hold on to it. Makes it easier that way. I'm going to take my wire and wrap it around the bale once. That's just to kind of secure it. And then I'm actually going to wrap it around one more time. Then I'm going to go ahead and start with whatever weave I want. I'm going to do another basket weave in this particular case because I think basket weave looks kind of cool on a um, bale. And also because it's movable. <laughs> <laughs> makes it very easy because by the time I move this bale and I size it and everything, if I don't have quite enough wire, um, I can move the basket weave really easily. So again, I'm over the top twice through the two wires, around twice the bottom, Sorry about that. Over and through. So I'm going to do that for roughly an inch. Now I only got a little past a half inch here because I'm starting to run out of wire and I want to make sure I have a fair amount of tail on this end um, for securing uh, some of the wires. So what do you do in this particular case? Well, like I said, basket weave is very forgiving, so I can separate these just a bit. I don't want to separate the weave too terribly much, and what I'm doing is I'm just gently, ever so gently, pulling. Now this serves two purposes. One, it will go ahead and show the weave off a little bit more. So it shows the pattern of the weave. And two, it uh, now gives me about an inch. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to take my bail making pliers and again you can go ahead and use for example Let me grab one. You can use a dowel or something. This dowel is just a little bit too wide for me uh, For my purposes, so I'm using bail making pliers pliers, but you can like I said use a dowel for this what I'm going to do is I'm going to first bend this to about a 45 degree angle so I've bent it. Now I'm going to take my bail making pliers and I'm going to grab it oh, probably just short of halfway um, up. I'm going to wrap this around. And again, you'd be doing basically the same thing if you were just using a dowel rod. So it looks like this now. So the two of them are, are pretty much meeting. You can see that the start of the weave is here and the end of the weave is here. Now what I need to do is I need to take either, I'll, let's use the round nose pliers for this. 
I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to put it at about the end of my weave and I'm just holding one wire at this point and I'm going to kick it up so you can see that it looks like this I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wires and move it down so you can see where I'm closing the gap now I'm going to take, let's see, let's sort these out. Here's my weaving wire. Here's the end of the weaving wire. And what I'm going to do, since I'm on this side, I'm going to wrap it down through and then across. So I'm, I'm skipping this particular wire. Across the top. So I've gone over the front. And now when I come back through, I'm going to grab both wires. And if you need to, you can go ahead and, and move this in a little bit. So I've got both wires. And I'm going to wrap it around at least one more time. So you can see that I'm securing these together. And because I've got 28 gauge here, it's pretty well, you know, kind of <laughs> melting into the background, so to speak. I'm going to go ahead and do it, I think, one more time. So now I've got it looking like this. And I want to do something with this wire because obviously you don't want it really hanging out. What I can do, and this is one, another great thing about the basket weave, and let's see how close I can get for this. I take my wire and I can go into the basket weave. And I want to do this as close as I possibly can. So uh, we'll, we'll use that. And I'll pull it through. And if you need to, in this particular case, grab your pliers, you know, use it for some leverage. And then I'll probably wrap it around one more time in through that same hole. And this allows you to go ahead and secure the wire a little bit more securely. I think it's secure enough. So I'm going to take my um, pliers that have a very sharp tip and I'm going to cut. Now be careful that you don't cut your wire. Um, yeah, I've done that before and you kind of have to go ahead and uh, get a little bit on the uh, inventive side when that happens. So we've got this. It looks a little cockeyed still, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. Now I've got this wire, or these two wires. I'm going to straighten my bale just a little bit and make these wires a little more parallel. I, you can see that I've got a fair amount of wire showing. So again, I'm going to take my flush cut pliers and I'm going to make sure that I've got my flush side so that'll be the straight side up against the wires and I'm going to cut them. Now I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch roughly. So you can see now that I've got them cut, I just have a very little piece of wire sticking out. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to flip these up. So I'm flipping them up to look like this. And you do want to go ahead and get these as similar as possible, but they don't have to look exactly the same. You can see where mine are just a little bit different. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and, you know, work with them to make them exactly the same. Um, up to you. So they look like this now. What I can do and what I like to do is I go back to my... Um, my chain nose pliers and I'll go ahead and squish it slightly and that serves two purposes one it brings the bale up some because remember it was kind of still pointing that direction and two it goes ahead and really um, <laughs> mushes <laughs> technical term there the wire into that bale so now when I rub my fingers across it I don't feel a thing all right so we've got our bale and again, we can kind of, you know, work with it to make sure that we've got it straight. 
Now we've got all the ends of the wires. So what do we do with these? Now the reason I like to have extra wire here is I want to decide exactly what what pleases me. Well, after looking at the front, I think I want to make the front a little bit more decorative. So I'm going to take this short wire, move it out of the way. I'm going to take my longer wire, and if I have to, I have to move it up a little bit, be gentle. You can also start another piece of wire if you want to, so up to you. I'm going to move this up a little bit just so it's easier for me to get a handle on, and I'm just going to coil the wire. I've decided that for what I want, I really don't have enough wire left to coil down as far as I need. So let me show you how to go ahead and add a wire if you find that you're running out. So I've got my weaving wire coming out from underneath, and it's on this side. Whenever you're starting a new piece of wire, you want to start it in the opposite direction. So I'm going to pull my wire through so that when I start weaving, I'm going to be using this longer length. So I take it and I just I make sure I have a fair amount of tail. I probably don't need quite that amount of tail, but then I'm going to just keep weaving. Now, the important part of this is at first they're going to be kind of um, oh not not real stable but that's okay because you're going to go ahead and weave just whoops I'm sorry about that okay for this part you're going to want to go ahead and keep your your weaving but instead of cutting these wires right away you do not want to do that. What you want to do is you want to do some more weaving to secure these wires before you even think about cutting these. Now I've got it to about the length I want and I'm ready to start cutting these extra wires. Now before I do it, I'm going to make sure that I scooch all my wires up. Again, scooch, technical term. And I'm going to check and see if I've got any little bare spots. If I do, what I can do is I can take one of the wires and move it over what I would consider the bare spot and see if that fixes it. If it does, like in this case it does, I'm just going to move it through one more time just to secure it in place. And there, no more bare spot. Now, and I'm going to tug on this just a little bit on both of those wires just to make sure that they're nice and secure. Then I'm going to again come in with my um, flush cut pliers and I'm going to cut as absolutely as close as I can. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do what I had in mind and that is to go ahead and put a gentle bend until I come across to this. And I want a little bit more of a swoop. So I want it, again, you just need to play with it and decide exactly what it is you, the effect that you're trying for. So, and you can see sometimes your wire will separate. Just go ahead and put it back in place. Well, I've got kind of the design I have in mind. What I have in mind is to have these meet, but once I have them meet, I will need to do something about this extra piece of wire. So I'm going to have them meet and I want to go ahead and take my extra wire and if I have a basket weave at this point it makes it a whole lot easier for me to stick um, my 28 gauge through this. But if you don't have a basket weave or your basket weave isn't uh, loose enough what you can do is just slip it under. And sometimes it helps to go ahead and slip under a spot where you know that there's, you know, a space. And then just gently draw it up. So you can see how I've just gently drawn it up. Make sure you don't have any loops in your wire because that is the kiss of death sometimes, so to speak. 
Now you can see that this little wire is coming across and you can just kind of barely see it. We can fix that too. And that is actually still kind of a little bit of a design option. So I'm going to bring it around a second time. And again, I'm going to put it through a space I know is available. Move it up just a little bit more. And again, you just have to be careful with this. And what I'm trying to do in this particular case, let's see if I can show it to you. So I'm trying to get the two wires right next to each other. So it looks like that. And again, I'll have to wrap it under one more time. Just because, you know, one or two wires usually isn't enough to go ahead and keep this all together. And again, you know, moving it up so that it looks neat. And then moving up the coil if you need to. All right, so I've got this wrapped the way I want it. Now what do I do with this piece of wire? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a loop. To create a loop, I will go ahead and cut this to about, oh, not quite a half an inch. Maybe just a little bit more than a quarter. So I cut that off, I take my round nose pliers, and I'm just going to take it by the very ends and then loop it up. So I've got it looking like this. I want a little bit more of a loop, so I'm just going to gently maneuver the wire. So you can see it looks like this. Now, if I wanted to at this point, I have enough wire that I could come around and even continue to go ahead and do some more coiling around this, but I'm not going to. I, I like the look of the bare wire there. And when I find that I have a wire that's not behaving like this, you know, and I'm showing you a lot of mistakes that I'm making, <laughs> but that's good because then you know how to correct them. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to go ahead and go through. So I'm coming out from underneath this wire. And now I'm going to go ahead and snip it. All right, I've gone ahead and fixed it a bit. And what I did is because I felt that I didn't have enough wire down here, I took it from the top and I scooched it on down. And then with an extra piece of wire that I had hanging out, I went ahead and did another couple of wraps up here to hide the bare spot. So again, that's one reason to have some extra wire hanging out. So now I'm going to cut this extra wire. And now we're left with just this piece. So my loop. And again, a lot of times it's better to err on the side of caution. I can always cut off more wire. But it, you really can't put it back on if you cut too short. So I'm going to cut it about here. And I'm going to take my round nose pliers and just make a loop again. Now here's my extra wire that I had from the very bottom. And I'm going to use this to go ahead and anchor my loop. So again, what I'm going to do is put it through wherever I can. And again, be careful about any particular extra loops. Like you can see that I've got this little, uh, kind of be a kink. And what you want to do is to unkink it because a kink is just a very vulnerable spot. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have this dragging down too much. And I'm going to keep looping. So I like to loop through or do my wire through this loop down here, if at all possible. And I'm going to do it three or four times. Now, before I cut this, I'm going to take my round nose pliers. And I'm going to tighten this loop a little bit more. So now I've got it. I'm going to cut it inside the loop as much as possible. So I've got my 
pliers going kind of down into that. And now I've got the back. So here we go, neatened up a little bit. And that is today's project. So let me show you how I got to this design. Because I wanted to show something that was easy enough to do if you're a beginner. Um, satisfying enough to do because you can, you know, punch it up as much as you want if you're a little bit beyond a beginner. But this is the design. Now to get to this, these are some of the stages I went through. I went through this and you can see that at this point I had added some of the extra beads. So, and then I didn't go ahead and wire wrap the, the top part. I just started right about here with my wire wrap and I left this part unwrapped. Another one that I did that I really didn't end up liking was this one and it just didn't satisfy me. And I just didn't like the way the back looked and everything. So I figured, no, nah, we're not going to do this one. I had started out on this one, and this one I actually used four wires on. Only two of them actually came up through here, and I had to anchor two extra pieces of wire at the bottom. And if you like a look like this where you want to use four wires, just go ahead and let me know in the comments down below, and I will see about doing something like this with four wires instead of just the two wires. I will show you how to anchor on extra wires. So if you want me to do something like this, Again, comment down below, just say something like, please do extra four wire pendant <laughs> or anything you really want to say. So that's one. Now to get to this, I played around quite a bit. So I created some really wild things. And I did this first thinking that, well, okay, I want to do something that's fun but I want to do something that's a little bit more exciting too and then I thought well you know a lot of you folks are fairly new to wire weaving so I didn't want to you know give you overload in the very beginning so that's why we went with this project but again if you want me to do a four wire weave where I show you how to attach an extra two wires or if you want me to get really fancy on a pendant Put a comment down below like, please do fancy pendant or <laughs> something along those lines. So you get the idea. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more wire weaving videos, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. At any rate, this is Gail signing out for the day saying, have yourself a beautiful day. Bye.